Part 3 of the Bateson Trailer Repair. Let's start by fitting new brake shoes to the left hand side. So I'm just going to use a flat wheel in my die grinder now just to remove that outer inner edge um, which will make me putting the drum on easier and removing it easier. Also this will deglaze the inside of the drum which will make the new brake shoes grip better. Also note that the bearings have been removed. I'm just going to wash all that metal dust off now because we certainly don't want that entering into the bearings because that will speed up wear. Some photographs showing the brake shoes. So here's the new shoes with labels and you can see the brake cable expander at the bottom there and this is the reverse of those shoes and here's the components split apart that's the slipper shoe with two springs on it and this is the brake lever hook and that slips over there like so and is pulled by the rod. So here's the new brake shoes that I ordered and these are a 203 by 40 millimeter knot brake shoe set for an 8 inch trailer drum brake. So here's the individual components, we've got a bag of springs, we've got two standard shoes and two auto reverse shoes with their corresponding springs on. So I'm just going to set these up so I know exactly which way they go around when putting them on the trailer. So I'm just going to set up this set which will be for the right hand side because as the drum rotates anti-clockwise it would drag the slipper shoe up on the spring. The spring would stretch as it goes backwards. Also note the position of those two springs, top and bottom. It's important that they're actually in the correct position. The bottom one is hooked in at the front and the other one is hooked in at the back. And then you've got the standard shoe retainer spring there on the side, like so. So I'm now going to put the left hand shoe together and Note that those springs are different lengths because one spring has to reach further than the other one. So this is the short spring and the other spring is the longer one. Now the way to think of the slipper shoe is, is as the wheel is locked on, if you were to go backwards think of that slipper disc as being stuck to the drum. So as it goes backwards it pulls that slipper shoe up and backwards and stretches the spring and as that spring stretches the brake then comes off so allowing the trailer to go backwards and then when it goes forward it wedges the spring is tight and it wedges itself so I'm going to start by showing you that this is the back of the trailer therefore I'm working on the left hand side and note the position of the slipper shoe so as that drum goes backwards, that spring will stretch and release the brake. So let's crack on then by installing the left hand brakes. So I'm going to install the actual brake cable first. And I'm going to put a bit of copper slip in this aluminium socket part, which connects to the half shell. I'm just going to put a bit in there to try and make it easier next time because no doubt these cables will need replacing. And again I'm going to just put a little bit in there and on the back of the other side of the shell in a hope of preventing the rust. So I need to now go under the trailer and move the camera. So now from under the car, making sure we're on axle stands because we definitely don't want this trailer to fall on our head. We can now push this cable on and then tap the socket on. Like so, watching your fingers. All right, that's on. So if we now go back to the front of the hub, we can take this part, which is the eyelet the cable eyelet. Again I'm going to put a little bit of copper slip on all this 
in the hope that it keeps everything moving. And the way to fit the eyelet is just to put it at 45 degrees, put the front of the cable in first, and then slide the back over. And that's nice and free. A bit more copper slip there. So I couldn't remove this adjuster bolt for some reason. It seemed to be stuck in there. And I was wanting to grease this area for the adjuster wedges. But on later inspection, I realised that bolt should not have had any grease on it at all. If anything, it should have had thread lock on it. So make sure you don't put grease on that bolt. So the danger with getting grease on that adjuster bolt is over time, if that bolt undoes itself, then the wedges will come back in, the shoes will become further away from the drum itself, and the braking efficiency will then be unequal to the other side. And you could also lose the braking altogether on this one wheel. So it is imperative that no grease gets onto that bolt. I think because of the condition of the hub, I was somewhat over worried about these wedges actually sliding as they're supposed to slide. So yeah, I'm making sure these wedges won't seize up, which is the intention. But I will have to now redo that bolt and remove the grease from it and put thread lock on which is what's supposed to be there. So I've wire brushed this uh, shoe expander assembly and I'm just going to now give it a few drops of oil there to make sure that it operates freely and efficiently. Certainly a lot different to how it used to be. I'm just going to put another bit of copper slip there onto the eyelet again to help that pull. And looking at the manual, it also mentions putting some grease on the rollers of the sliding shoe. And also, while looking at the manual, I will just mention that they actually say that if the lining of the shoes is less than 50%, or that the lining is older than 10 years, then they should be replaced as a matter of course. Obviously, if you get oil or grease on the linings, then they would have to be replaced as well anyway. So I've added just a little bit of copper slip there to the points of contact with the adjuster and the pre-adjusting wedge assembly. So that all fell apart on the floor. So I'm now going to try a different way and see if by installing the springs first whether that will hold the shoes in position while I... So that's the top spring in, so that's holding in there okay. So this method may work. I was trying to put the shoes on first and hold them in position and it was almost impossible. So we'll put this shoe retaining spring in. This is quite an awkward little thing, this. You've got to push it in and just turn it for the hook to grab on the back. And uh, it wasn't playing ball with my long nose pliers. Got there in the end after a few attempts. So I'm just going to try and pull these out. The main thing is not to get any grease on the linings. Because you, you really don't want grease on those linings. So I'm just going to try and use a clamp here just to hold the shoe in position to stop it trying to throw itself off and onto the ground. Make sure you put this adjuster in the right way round. Okay, so we seem to have won now. And that seems to be in position. Ah, oh, the last spring. Now this was a devil as well. I'll, I'll forward this to where the spring actually goes in. So after much fighting and a tap with a hammer, the spring's home. So that's all looking correct. So I'm just going to check that this retaining spring is central 
there check for the hook on the back make sure it's definitely hooked in so it's looking correct make sure it's sort of central there so the hub can go back on and we will need to clean the brake pad material now so when the drum's going forward it sort of creates a wedge effect and then as it goes backwards this slipper shoe will rise up on the pressure of the spring and allow the brake to come off. I'll show that again. So that's what happens when you go backwards. Hence, auto reverse brake. So this bearing came out for some reason when I withdrew the hub. So I've got to put the bearing back in now. So I'm going to make sure I put plenty of lithium grease on there and on the bearing itself. I have pre cleaned this bearing as well. So pop that back in, pack it with a bit more grease around there. And then using a bearing tool, which is just underneath the diameter of this um, seal, the bearing tool is. I'm just going to re-hammer that part back in. So although the seal is damaged, hopefully this will hold the seal in place. Um, and perhaps keep some of the debris out. So just make sure you don't get any grease on the inside of that drum and if you do make sure you wipe it off. I'm also going to grease the stub axle now so that's all ready for the hub to go back onto. Giving that plenty of grease there. That's lithium grease again. So before the drum goes on we must use some car brake cleaner there and just ensure that any grease that might have actually got onto those shoes has been removed. Very important step that. And before you put the drum on, just give the inside of the drum a quick wipe because I think my fingers did go on that inside of the drum and I had grease on there. So we can now bring the hub up to the stub axle and slide it in position. So we can now put some grease on the conical seat of the front bearing and plenty on the actual bearing again and we pop that back in. So originally there was a washer that went on between this bearing and the castle nut but unfortunately the dimensions of the new castle nut and the thickness of the washer meant that the turrets were covering the hole for the split pin it was protruding too much so as you can see there the split pin's not going to fit so that's clearly not going to be acceptable so I either file the bottom of the nut down um, or use a thinner washer or as a temporary solution I think what I'll have to do is just remove that washer Put the castle nut up straight on, put my split pin through. So you've just got to line those holes up for the split pin and make sure that the wheel isn't too tight but it's also not got movement, lateral movement. So that seems to be just about right. So then you can flare the legs of the split pin like so and then obviously that actually makes sure the wheel doesn't come off so the nut, the castle nut can't work its way loose now because of the split pin so that is looking pretty good now considering the condition of what that hub was I think that's quite presentable now so the only thing I can try and do is just to prevent any water getting to the bearing is I'm going to try and pack it with a bit of grease. If there's anybody who ever wants to sponsor me for grease, for endless supplies of grease, it would be appreciated. I do seem to use quite a lot of grease. All my problems are solved by grease. Or maybe my problems are caused by grease. Okay, so wipe off some of that grease now 
Well, we'll put the cap on first, which isn't really going to fit terribly well because part of it has broken away. Give that a wipe and give it a spin. Okay then. So we now need to just adjust the uh, brake shoe adjusting bolt, which should not have any grease on it. Um, so it pinches the drum. So that's dragging now. So we just need to back it off slightly. So I'm just seeing how far it goes. So that's locked on solid now. So completely unacceptable. And now we've got movement again. It's a little bit of drag there, and that's totally free spinning. So that's exactly where we want it. And if that bolt had lock nut on, that would hold it in the perfect position now. So I can get the wheel on now. Tighten those wheel nuts up using a 19mm socket. Give it a quick check for any play. And then torque the wheel nuts. Torquing the wheel nuts is pretty important and I'm going to be torquing these to 70 newton meters which is what I believe they are according to knots. So I'm now going to fit the new brake shoes to the right hand side. I'll just remove the wheel. There's no split pin holding this castle nut on. So let's just take the nut off Remove that first bearing and then pull the drum away. So this bearing I'm going to cover up with a latex glove and that will just stop the metal dust um, from entering that, give it a bit of protection. So we we'll deglaze this hub now and I'll also try and get rid of that lip there on the edge just to make this drum easier to go back on and to remove. And there's me in my protective gear. <laughs> and now we can remove the latex glove. And job's done. And it still rotates. So I'm now going to put the cable on on this side. So I'm going to put a bit of copper slip again in there. In like the cavity of that brake cable. And a little bit on the half shell just to try and prevent further corrosion though I do think this these parts of the trailer are probably a little bit past that now past the point of no return so we're just going under here now and get this part on so I'm just going to check the cable make sure it moves nice and freely and there it is so we might get a couple of years service out of that. So it's now on to putting a bit of copper slip onto the wedges, the shoe adjuster wedges. So one there on the left, the other one on the right. And then the central wedge that pushes those two wedges apart. And then the screw just needs to go in checking that's nice and free which it is wiping my hands now note that the bolt has a blue thread lock on so don't make the mistake I made on the other wheel which was I put copper slip all over that bolt so you should never do that so we can now just wind that back in like so and then we've got to put the little eyelet on the brake cable itself. So that goes in at 45 degrees, front forward, and then slip the back over. So that seems to be working quite nicely. So next, just gonna have a look at the shoes, the position of the shoes, how it all looks, make sure everything's correct. And it all seems to be right. So a drop of oil on the adjuster to make sure that pivots nicely, which it does. Bit of copper slip on the end there. 
where the eyelet goes and then we can just hook that back in I'm also putting copper slip on the ends where they contact the brake shoes themselves so that slots in there so that's ready now for the brake shoes themselves so I'm just going to put a bit of copper slip also on the contact points where the shoe actually contacts the adjuster and the expander I'm just making sure that the pivot point is next to the fixed shoe which is where it's going to sit so that's the standard shoe in place now with its spring its retaining spring so we're now going to put the springs in so this is the shorter one that goes in at the front this is a slightly longer one that goes in at the back and that's the position of the springs is important because it makes sure that the shoes don't actually move forward and then lubricate the pivoting points on the slipper shoe and a little bit of copper slip there on the points of contact like we did on the other standard shoe so I'm going to put the spring in first this time because these are quite awkward make sure that's the correct way you correct, correct the correct way round so that's looking okay I'm going to hold that with a clamp temporarily so I did try with this but you, you can't pull the spring with long nose pliers so again what I was going to do is just try and lever the shoe into position put the spring in and then use brute force and a little bit of a twist and there we go shoes in position now so there's definitely a little bit of grease on those brake pad material so make sure that's all cleaned off things are looking quite good now certainly looking better than when I first took the drum off so now with the drum we can put a little bit of grease on the stub axle not too much because you obviously don't want it to fling off or something and get onto the brake shoe linings it's only a small amount I need to put some more grease in for this bearing now that we've disrupted it so get a little bit of grease in there And don't forget to actually clean the inside of the drum so this has got like a conical ring that actually came out of the drum itself so I'm going to pop that back in and then we can put the final bearing in again with plenty of lithium grease on there Now this one, the washer seems to be actually okay. But I'll still give it a little bit of grease there to try and protect those bearings, just to try and stop any water getting to them. Do what you can. So that's the washer on and the castle nuts. And things seem to line up okay on this side. So I'm just going to play around with this now, just to check it's not pinching. So just keep turning it, but you've got to obviously make sure that the castle nut lines up with where the split pin's going to go. It's, it's got to choose one point where that pin's going to go. So I'm happy with that now. I'm going to tap that through, split the pin apart. So that actually ensures that the wheel doesn't come off. So the castle nut is adjusting the sort of bearing pressure okay that's looking all right so a quick adjustment there of the distance between the shoes and the drum and then we can put the wheel back on spin our lug nuts on and not forgetting 
the all important talk which like I said before it's about 70 newton meters slight amount of wobble there but I think that's certainly better than what it was so those are all talked up so on to the braking rod now replacing the braking pull rod so I've bought myself a packet of M8 nuts some M8 joining nuts and some M8 threaded rods. So I'm just going to temporarily join the two one meter lengths together just so that I can compare with the length of the original rod. I'll pop those two side by side and then I can cut the new rod to the length of the old rod. Maybe a little bit longer just to give me some allowance in case of a mistake so I'll just pop a bit of tape on there and now I'll cut that with my hacksaw my super fast hacksaw it's as good as electric and then give that a quick file as it's good practice to file the end a little bit of red thread lock on here because I obviously I want this to be permanent and then I'll just pinch those together with a couple of spanners like so and then I can insert the other end of the one meter rod again a bit more thread lock spin that on and pinch it tight now that should stay put and shouldn't come undone so I've put a lock nut onto this thread on the end because this bracket which is the part that attaches to the main coupling goes on here and using a 13 millimeter spanner we can lock that tight so that's now ready to go on the other end so we've just got to put it onto the bracket on that pull bracket underneath the trailer so we'll go under the trailer and what we must do first is attach the two cables and those two cable abutment nuts we we'll pop those on so I'm making sure the cables have a nice smooth run with no tight turns and I've used cable ties just to hold them up to the bottom of the trailer so we're just tightening these abutment nuts up now this one kept spinning so I had to use a pair of mole grips there just to hold that so I could pinch that abutment nut up tight so now we've got the balance plates or the pull plates now I'm putting a little bit of copper slip on there because we've got those sort of domed washers that are gonna roll around in there there they are so make sure you put those on the right way around I'm just checking there because they are designed to allow for some movement so I'm going to use a six mil spanner there just to hold that cable end and then we can put the pull rod through now and again that's got its own little domed washer which sits on the back of that plate and then we need to take up some slack now and the rod was moving so I had to put a bit of tape on there and again use a pair of mold grips just to hold it while I took that slack up now we can go to the other end so we now need to fix this bracket onto the brake mechanism at the front of the trailer so this slides on it's a little bit awkward so that pushes over that and then we've got to put a washer either side push the pin in so that's the second washer on the other side so now the pins through we need to put we need to put that third washer on and that goes before the split pin goes in and then once that split pins in 
hopefully that's all attached and can't come free so if we'll take a look at that underneath as you see as I pull that mechanism you can see it pulling on the threaded rod all the way to the back I'll put the handbrake on now and you'll see the threaded rod go tight so it might need a little bit of adjustment at the other end so we're going to do that now probably needs a little bit of oil on there as well so I've put a bit of tape on the threaded rod so I can put on some mole grips try and minimize the damage to the rod and then I can use a 13 millimeter socket and take up the slack now what you might find is that that rod actually needs to be cut again um, just to take up depending on how much slack you need to actually take up so that's still too loose so I'm gonna to have to cut the end of that rod and carry on taking the slack up but anyway so I've now done that and the brake seems to be working I certainly can't turn it I'll see if it goes backwards because it should actually go backwards and unlock so it will rotate backwards although still quite hard to do and does it come off lovely that's looking good and not too much of a wobble best grease that overrun shaft so I'm going to use a bit of lithium molly grease here which is the same as your CV grease in your CV joints so that sticks quite well it's quite water repellent so hopefully that will do the job of keeping that tube nice and lubricated so I'll put a couple of um, cable ties on here now try and keep out some of the weather and once that's clipped on I'll try and push that ram back which is quite difficult because you've obviously got the new damper in there now and we'll see how this operates the actual brake so it's very hard to push back which is how it's supposed to be okay so that's take the handbrake off now so the pull rod's nice and slack so as I push simulating the trailer running into the back of my car so the force is pushing on that and there it is pulling on the pull rod activating the brakes and then slowly it releases again best get those mud guards back on so because the washers are a little bit too big for these bolts what I'll do is I'll centralise them and weld them in place like so so that should hold the washers there nicely so I can get the tatty mud guards back on this one looks like it's been stitched with cable ties but anyway so put a bit of thread lock on there and we double nut this bit more thread lock we really don't want this to come off and then we can just trim the thread off like so give it a little smooth over and that doesn't look too bad so we do the same on the other side and I think the mechanical side of the trailer is probably finished so we've just got the electrical side to do now mudguard seems secure does it stop doesn't seem to be much movement there which is good news considering how wobbly the wheels were before does the brake work it does no it doesn't seem to be much movement there and the wheel does go backwards so the reverse function is working as well everything's looking good 
And just before I end this video, I'd like to give a special thanks to Gregory Delecki from the USA and Jonas Ohm from Sweden for their financial contribution to helping me keeping this channel going. Thank you. Thank you for watching and please see part four coming soon.